cooking fresh with Roxanne happy Sunday today we are going to tackle the wonderful world of steak this is some um, I believe they're New York New York's and they've got a lovely amount of fat that you can see that's going to be very pivotal when we're cooking them because that's going to be rendered down I'll show you how to do that now these have already been salted on one side. I already began the process before y'all showed up. And I'm going to show you again using Himalayan pink salt. So, nice healthy coating of it. I don't know. So I see it. So I'm going to on both of them. Now. There we go. Whoops. I was only picking one for me. I was going to forget about Daryl. Can't do that. You really couldn't. <laughs> Men are funny about, well, some men are funny about their meat. They really like it. Okay. Now, let's talk about pans. Many people, myself included, I mean, there's grilling. You can, I, I'll probably show you how to grill a uh, steak. Not tonight. Tonight, I'm going to do my special pan fry. And you can pick all kinds of different pans. There's non-stick coated pans. There's um, just regular stainless steel pans. Now me, myself and I personally, my all-time preference is always going to be cast iron skillet. Especially for steaks. You put that thing on medium, not a hair higher. Okay? And you get it set up with the right temperature and that meat cooks perfectly. Usually I'm looking at these, let's uh, you know about about a little under an inch. So maybe it's three quarters of an inch on both of those. I'm gonna say three or four minutes each side. Total cook time about eight. Rest time should be at least ten minutes. Um We'll see how it goes. And we're going to be using tonight butter. We're also going to be using some Italian spice because I'm fresh out of time. And um, it's, it's a good blend. I like the Italian spice blend. You put that in there where you would normally stick the sprigs of thyme and rosemary. And you have your garlic medallion. That's what I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using a garlic medallion to start the, the garlic flavor through the butter. I knew you were supposed to top it with a medallion, but hey, there's me butter all throughout this little guy. And I may still have enough of one of the other medallions to top it with, so it's all good. It's all good. But we need to be able to get enough fat built up in that pan between the rendering of the beef and the butter to be able to baste it towards the end. That's what's really going to keep that moisture in. Now, I'm shooting for medium rare. You'll be able to see the finished product. In the uh, aftermath, I will post that on Facebook and YouTube. You should be able to see it as well. So you'll be able to see that perfect medium rare. Ooh, I love that. Um, and TikTok. Love you guys. Okay, so let's get you. It's right there. That's perfect. You don't need to see me all the time. It's better that you see my hands. What my hands are going to do is grab my bacon fat. Uh-huh. I don't see why you can't start to temper the pan. Meaning, you know, getting a nice layer of oil. You're tempering it with the oil so that you're creating a barrier between that heat of medium on the cast iron skillet and the meat. The heat and the meat. It creates a lovely brown sear. Ugh, just, I love cast iron. I've been working with cast iron since uh, I was a young girl. Let's see. I'm going to leave that one. So, alright. That was roughly about a teaspoon and a half of bacon fat. We buy it at the store and we render it ourselves. Let's put it in the oven. First thing I'm going to do, and by the way, okay, 
the frying pan. Very important. Okay? Tom, I don't want to have too much contact with it. I don't want to be grinding underneath a bit with the spatula. Sorry. Okay, miss out there. I'm using the sticks around in the bottom of the can. I'm doing that to make sure that if they're not sticking, the meat's just going to be just right. I don't want them sticking. No sticking. I don't want any meat on the can. I want them in the stove. Mm -hmm. That's how that's going to go. So, it doesn't even really feel so far. These are going to need to go. Oh, yeah, I think that's good. Four minutes each side. So we're going to do four minutes each side. And when I turn this next time, I'm going to wait. Once I get on the third turn, next one I'm going to add the butter and the spices. At that point, I should have a lovely amount of fat building up in the bottom of the frying pan because we're also rendering the beef as we go. And it's hugely important to do that, all of that, and have all that fat because you want your steak tender and moist. And that moisture thing is in the fat. I never understood it myself until I started really thinking about it. <clears throat> and I remember watching an episode of, um, I, I think it was, um, Who, Be Who Can Beat Bobby Flay or something like that. And it had something to do with this steak contest. And he had, um, I think it was, I don't want to say it was a T-bone. It's so cool. It's three inches thick. It was here. I never saw anything like it. Of course, he seared it and put it in the oven. You know, when he baked it, this is the interesting part. He said he baked it with roughly, I think it was two cups of duck fat. Yeah. Oh, man. I was like, what? It's even swimming in fat? No. no, no, no. It was <clears throat> actually pulling from that fat. More moisture for itself. Mmm, I wouldn't agree if it really, it really works that way. Well. And I do the same thing. I use that in the kitchen because I want meat to stay moist. Now, another thing I want to show you on these is... Oh, frost truck in. What happened there? Oh, well, here we are. Check out the marbling on this one, especially in how it runs through here. Okay. This one there. Okay. That's amazing. Because what that is, is you built a moisture pack, you know. That's what's important that I be patient with these. May even take a little bit longer than I thought. That's okay. You really don't want to push it. And I'm going to dome it for a little bit. It's getting a little aggressive. And then I'm going to probably turn it and get it ready for the next round. Now, we're going to be serving this with some apple coleslaw that I made. Delicious. The sweetness of the apple and the coleslaw and the tartness of vinegar is going to come up again. The stout buttering us with the steak. It can be a love combination. Well, it's going to help some garlic bread. Ooh! can't wait. Sourdough. Um, we've been buying this sourdough over at Segway, made by, I think it's a company called Essential. It's new to me, but it's really, really good. It's one moment I'm really thirsty. Delicious. And I think they count that the starter for it is 100 years old. Something like that. All right. We are just stepping through this. Just turning it. For the next side. Yeah, it's definitely. Okay. Got some goodness going on there. Okay. So let's show you what it looks like. 
turn them. So you get to work. Okay, my hands will get all the way. I'm going to clean it tonight. See if you should fly in every year. Look at here. It's starting to get that. On a bit. Did you see how the salad is still? Uh uh. No, no. Gotta work on that. Gotta work on that. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. Cast iron is a very. Uh, it, it, it holds on to heat really, really, really well. The nature of it. I mean, it's iron. You know, and it hangs onto that heat. Oh, that's the timer. The four minutes are going to so get lost in the fog. The fog of my own mind. Now, there we go. I gotta rinse some more fat off the, 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 the tail end of the steak, but yeah, the, the smaller end of the steak. I could cut this off. I really could if I want to. I could take that fat and cut it off. I don't want to go. Again, it renders nicely. It creates more fat that you can use, baste it, and keep it even more moist. So that's the same thing. Oh, don't drop it. Oh, let's get this over. Mm -hmm. Let's go with the steak wrestling. Go ahead and use this in the steak. There we go. More important you see this than see my face. And a little bit more there. I'm going to start surrendering and have it even when get to go. There it goes. Oopsie baby. Oh. My hand's flipping. There it goes. I'm really patient, too. Again, this is just the uh, Himalayan pink salt and pepper. Correct. Pepper. This one doesn't have anything. I think that's nice. It's still quite a bit in the bottom of the pan. That's a really a lot of bit. A little lot of bit. Okay. Yum. Now let's see. I'm gonna dome it just a little bit longer. <sighs> Get into the fun part. Fun parts when you stick the. There he is. Garlic medallion in and let it melt. And get it in. I mean, I have to be careful. I'll probably turn it down a little bit. I'll baste it and baste it and baste it. And that's what's going to help finish it up. As far as I know, I won't need to put it in the oven. But if it were a little bit thicker, I might have the oven on standby. Just in case. But if it were a little bit thicker, I mean, you know, like if it was like, oh, I definitely would want to put it in the oven for five minutes or so until it feels like medium rare and we're going to talk about that too I may put it in for about 5 minutes until it starts to get that feel there's different feels to, to demonstrate the feel let me get these things to come together oh my god ok demonstrate the feel get your tongue that's why you have to be tongue tongue put it down like this so smooth and fresh ok now the feel Okay. No crossing. I'm feeling it's rare. I can see too when I press that there's a little bit of blood. That tells me it's still there. There it goes. Got ready for the turn. So now I've got to put you guys down. Oh, sorry about my hand. I'm ready to put the garlic butter in the basin. Ooh, I need a spoon. Two spoons. That's my cue. I'm going to 
thumbnail it for YouTube and that will be the finished um, beamer so you can look at it. I might be able to thumb that on YouTube. I will for sure have it on Facebook so that you can see the finished product. It's delicious. Now, give me serving that with some, mm, how do you want to say this? Sauté mushrooms I made earlier with some red wine and did red wine reduction on it and some garlic, a little onion. Uh, it's pretty yummy. It's been, it's been in the fridge. I'm gonna um, add it to the steak right for a cold melt. So yeah, <laughs> that'll be good. <laughs> that'll be delicious. Anyway, I'm so glad you were here to join me. This is Cooking Fresh with Roxanne. Thank you so much. God bless you on this wonderful Sunday. And I hope your steaks make you as happy as these are gonna make Daryl and I. Cooking Fresh. Have a nice evening.